you have got to admit, Manosphere never fails to deliver prime entertainment. In the last year, there's been a new group popping on the internet, calling themselves Passport Bros. We gotta talk about this, guys. The new kids on the block. They advocate for Western men to get their passport and go to Southeast Asia or Latin America to have an easier time with women and life. It is time we had a discussion on this. Of Passport Bros continues to grow around the country. Now, the group is known for a bit more than just traveling. Then what kind of damn trouble did you get yourself into with these Brazilian women? Uh, well, actually, I wasn't trying to start any trouble. I actually thought I was doing a lot of promoting. Um, I was already on my way to Thailand anyway. I was going to be in Sao Paulo for about a week. I love how they always repackage our theories and then sell them to others. First of all, this has been a thing since forever. Geomaxing is not something new. I love how they act like they figured out something new, <laughs> calling themselves a cringe name like Passport Bros. People already muddied those waters years ago. Also, I never understood why would you openly try to spread the idea which will only increase the competition for everything. More men doing it will mean lesser benefits for those who already went to Southeast Asia to live on easy mode. The jig is up, brother. Everybody already heard about it. When I first arrived in Colombia, I barely saw tourists there. Mm -hmm. I saw a few. It was just Colombians. It was full of Colombians. Now you go there, you'll barely see any Colombians and you'll just see tourists. Mm -hmm. So what's happened, the prices are going up, hotels have shot up, apartments have shot up, Airbnbs are more expensive. Everything in general has got, gotten more expensive because more and more foreigners. Obviously, one reason is they often offer consultation or other stuff to make money off this. Passport bros are like a cross brat between Mistow and dating coaches, like a bridge. The next step of a Pokemon evolution. From Charmander to Charizard. <laughs> Presenting the passport pill. This is a term that I've used in my private life, occasionally on the internet, and I wanted to make my official video declaring the coinage of the term the passport pill, being passport pilled. The, pa the passport pill is the realization that virtually all problems go away when you leave. When you leave America, when you leave the West, all problems are gone. Just like I said, you will see little, if any, difference between these groups. Yesterday, it was about game and masculinity. Today, it is all about the passport pill. Missed up. Passport bros, dating coaches, these are all cousins of each other, like Pokemon evolution. They are now telling men to travel to third world countries, which is fine, something I actually support. I will talk about this in the second part of the video. I will explain why and how this can be a good idea if exercised correctly. It is a big if, we will get to that. I am not necessarily suggesting that this is a bad course of action, but there is this dishonesty, delusion and cop with this community, Passport Bros. Complete and utter delusion. One of their major talking points is how Southeast Asian women are so different. Oh, they are so traditional, so feminine. First of all, this traditional woman thing, they love keep repeating, bro. Trust and believe. Actual traditional Thais will not be dating a tattoo-ridden foreigner of Tinder in the first place. <laughs> Use your brain and be real with yourself. Will a traditional and feminine woman put out for a tattoo-ridden degenerate foreigner who just arrived in the country for obvious reasons? Some guy who can't even speak the language, who doesn't know the customs, but for sure, she's a super duper traditional woman. <laughs> the cop is real. The thing about women is, if they like you, they will act more feminine and will convince you that they are submissive and traditional until they get what they want. How Filipinas treat men. Number one, they are very loving guys. You can expect tons of affection and care when you're dating a Filipina. Hugs, kisses, and all the above. Yes, sir. Number two, they love to massage you and care for you, cook you meals, manicures, pedicures. Oh, you guys. It's the best. Reason number three, they love to have fun. They're always a good time, always in a good, uplifted mood. Yes, guys. They'll love to have some, do some karaoke with you, you know, go out for a nice walk and laugh and enjoy. 
and they really make you feel secure in your manhood and they add value to your life. Oh, Asian women are so different, bro. All that stuff happens till you are on the hook. Oh, these women are nothing like Western women, bro. It is all an act. A traditional Thai woman won't be banging a tattoo-ridden American on the first date. They are just more desperate. Not that they are any different. They don't hold the cards in a destitute country. You do. What they are interested in is what you show on your shirt. A ticket to the West. You also gotta love their cringe maxing shorts. This guy literally bought himself a passport brochure. You can't make this up, man. I mean, this was something white men used to do. This has been a thing for the last 20 years. Black brothers are kind of late to the party. <laughs> there may be some men out there that are doing that. Uh, that doesn't apply to me and the men I know because we... First of all, these women don't ask for much. A lot of people got to remember this is not the United States. In the United States, women ask for a lot. This is their favorite answer and they are confronted with reality as well. Oh, they never ask for money. Just because they don't explicitly ask for money doesn't mean they don't have expectations or plans in their mind. Bro, they are living in a poor third world country where even bottom tier western men like you can be players. And when I say this to their faces, these guys always get offended. Oh, she doesn't ask for money. We are not like that. Just because she doesn't ask for money doesn't mean she isn't playing you. She just doesn't want to give off that gold digger foreigner vibe. Asking what happened to Becky, why is she no longer the preference, why do these bandits now after spending at least 20 years talking about how women of no color were the preference, they were submissive, they know how to treat their men, and now they are talking about how they have to go get their passports and go to foreign countries because there's an issue with modern women. When the reality of it is is women of no color have been the original modern women they are the ones who started feminism they are the ones who rebelled against their men but that didn't stop these bandits from talking about how desirable these women were sport toys we losing i firm the guy i'm calling the cops i'm calling no i'm calling them right now because this bandit simply took his degeneracy to another location. We already know within our community, these bandits are not loyal. They lie, they cheat. They now have to use their passport and the American dollar as the great equalizer between themselves and actual desirable men. She called them passport bandits. <laughs> I mean, I knew she had a lot to say about passport bros, and I was not let down. Comedy bro, pure entertainment. Yo, no cap, to me Cynthia G is a part of the manosphere at this point. Even though she's not a man, she's a part of it. Black man is all she ever talks about. A black dude dating a white woman is literally all she ever talks about. I visited her channel again after two years and she's still making the same black man, white woman videos every single day. Calling them trash bags. <laughs> I find it funny how much she cares though. Like, why would you care so much if you don't want those men anyway? If I am not attracted to a group of people, I really don't care who they are chasing as long as it is not me. <laughs> I don't care what you do, I don't care what you think, what you are attracted to. Just stay away from me and be straight. She claims to be a channel about black women, but black men dating white females are all she ever talks about. I knew she would go off on passport bros. <laughs> I mean, she's partially right. Their whole rhetoric of, oh, it is because they are so feminine, is just a cop. I mean, there are a lot of stuff that I don't agree with Cynthia G, but she's right here. This whole, they are so submissive, they are so traditional thing is just an act that is gonna disappear once those females are in the West. Passport bros are just being manipulated. You know, I started dating a Filipina about two years ago, you know, like two and a half years ago. And, you know, it wasn't a typical horror story that you normally hear, you know, like, oh, she ran me for my money. I'm missing, you know, two, three million pesos. Mm -hmm. It wasn't nothing like that. She didn't ask for money. She didn't ask for anything other than my time, love and affection. And that will always be the case. She won't be asking for money until you are already in too deep, way over your head. These men are not smart people. They are very desperate. And like I always say, naiveness and desperation is a very dangerous combination. You never want to have these two traits simultaneously. 
That is the road to disaster. Right off the rip, I could tell how his story was gonna end. I didn't even need to listen to the rest of it, predicting 8 o'clock at 7.30. You know, and the thing about it was, for two years, every day, waking up, I love you, babe, hey, how you doing, what's going on, you know, you know, como esta, you know, everything, como esta en log, you know what I mean, how, yeah. you, how you doing, how was your sleep, you know, everything, you know, I started to learn her language, you know, I started to get ingrained in the actual culture you know, of the area and the province that she was in. I started to really invest my time, energy, and everything into the actual relationship. And that was the mistake on your part. You already invested way more than her without her providing anything in return. Again, you can tell this guy didn't understand much of anything. Just a desperate guy looking for some affection, ready to be taken advantage of. Um, by the time we got to uh, last year, you know, we already had plans to get married. You know, everything was already set in stone. We already had the resort, everything, and I already had the plane tickets, mm -hmm. you know. And what I did was I bought non-refundable plane tickets. Closer to the end of the relationship, from about August until December of last year, she started to let another man court her. What? Yeah. What? Is that, is that a question? Is, is that foreigner or Filipino? Here's the thing. It was a foreigner that's living here. I stood no chance. Like clockwork, guys. And I bet you guys anything, this guy would have gotten offended if you suggested the only logical line of thought. Because I have witnessed this before myself when I called out guys like him. Bro, if she's like that with you, what makes you think she wouldn't be like that with another foreigner? What makes you so special? Oh, bro, you don't understand. We are not like that. I have seen this time and time again. If she's doing it with you, trust and believe she's doing it with another foreigner as well. It is crazy to me how mentally weak most men are. Swear to God, men are gullible idiots. I am not even kidding, like, all limbic brain. All the reason and logic goes out of the window. <laughs> the sad thing is, they probably want to be played. They were already so ready to be sold a lie. And the thing was, was that closer to the end of the relationship, she started to let this one foreigner get close to her. He was a friend of some of her friends, mm. some of her Filipino friends. And every relationship has its ups and downs. You know, so the one thing that would happen is when we would have our downs, she would go to her friends and her friends would be like, oh, you know, forget that guy. He's not even here yet. Here's yeah. a guy that lives here. All of these guys are kind of late to the party, honestly. I mean, white men have been doing this for decades. <laughs> Finally, ethnic men also picked up on the trend. And I don't really blame these guys. They have abysmal SMV in the West, much lower than white dudes. So it is a real shock when they go to those countries and actually see something they have never experienced in their lives before. So they are even more eager to cling on to any hope that it is real, which makes them an easier target. This is another common theme you will observe. Everybody want to believe that what they have is real. So oh, there you go. Oh, we are not like that, man. You don't understand. This is real. She never asks for money or anything. And it always ends the same way. I understand these guys' plight. The data shows 65% of young men report being single. This is a record high number, so I get it. But what these guys need to understand is this. The females in those countries are lying to you. Bro, no matter where you go, you take yourself with you. And this trip... It was bittersweet because I'm having the best time of my life. Mm. But at the same time, this is the trip that I was supposed to get married on. Oh. I decided that Thailand was a place that I would like to live when I first came here in 2015. The quality in life in Thailand compared to the United States, I'd say for 90% of things is much better. It's a very easy life compared to the US, as well as you're dealing with a bit of a currency arbitrage. Now, what I'm gonna say in the second part of this video might surprise you, but I actually encourage you to be a passport bro. For a lot of you, it might be a good idea to relocate, guys. There is absolutely no shame using your competitive advantage. Move to wherever you are traded best, wherever you can live your best life. As a Westerner, you simply have a higher status, simply to live a better life because of currency arbitrage and lower prices. You can also play women who think they are playing you. Just be loved, Avi Vitar. 
tell her what she want to hear. Oh, yeah, I am looking to have a family in the long run, you know. I want to settle down in my big house in America, you know. Say stuff like that, even if you live in a trailer back home. I mean, females do it all the time. Why shouldn't you? Can't play fair in an unfair game. Don't let people shame you for getting a plane ticket and moving to a place where life is cheaper, competition is lower. Technology, the invention of Tinder, online dating completely changed dating dynamics in favor of women. They are not ashamed of making use of that uneven field. Why should you be ashamed to make use of technology and globalization? I mean, 30 years ago, men couldn't move as easily. A lion who can't catch the gazelle can't hop on a plane to go to a different jungle where the food is slower. Modern transport threw you a lifeline, my man. Why shouldn't you use it? They don't like it if you do, though. I know. This man in his video goes on to perpetuate a horrific stereotype that literally harms Asian women that says that Asian women are more submissive and loyal than Western women. The reason these women from these developing countries are marrying you is the exact same reason that American women had to marry you before the 1970s because they had to, because they were economically vulnerable. And they have to go somewhere where the playing field is so uneven, like a destitute country, a destitute person, a destitute mate, in order to find somebody who will be with them. Double standards. It is fine and dandy when they play the game on an uneven field in the West, but they turn around and shame you when you use an advantage. Remember, People are entitled to their freedom, except you. The truth is they don't want you to be happy. They don't want you doing good for yourself, living better. If this becomes a trend in the West, they will have less potential chasers. They will have less men to turn down and boost their ego. They don't want you to be happy. It would be a lot better for them if you continuously kept hustling for a mediocre female in the West who doesn't have much to offer. They would rather see you die than to see you fly. By the way, make no mistake, some of these women in these clips are not necessarily wrong when they say, oh, those women are desperate, that's why they are marrying you for the same reason females married men back in the day, but now they don't want you. There is some truth to that. It is pure copium and delusion when the passport bros claim, oh, it is because because uh, Asian women are so traditional, so feminine, you know. They love me for who I am. And when they get married and bring them to the West, it is GG. Game over. You just got played. You didn't even got played. You played yourself. The women in these clips are right about that. But the reason they are so angry is because they don't want you to be happy. They don't want you to leave the West. It would be a lot better for them if you dedicated your whole life to max some aspect of your life just to chase them when they are young and provide for them when they are old. It is exactly what they want you to do. Chase them when they are young and provide for them when they are old. I will tell you guys this. Geomaxing is more legit than looks maxing. Yes, I have said it. For most men, I am talking about most men here, the average show, 95% of men. I am not talking about the extremes, about the GJ chat. As long as you did the bare minimum, like low body fat, decent hygiene, as long as you already did those, the return on investment will be a lot better for simply relocating. That is the simple truth for the average Joe man. Not Stop only for twenty dollars for everything. That is a very American thing. To yeah. Do. Go to a country and uh, buy a bread, buy a buy a croissant that costs one dollar. We're like, oh, he's so nice, a lovely Colombian guy. Here's fifty dollars. Now that Colombian guy behind in the bakery is going to say, huh. Every gringo, every extranjero, foreigner, is going to give me $50. So they start raising prices first on their goods and their, their products or services. And then they start expecting these tips from everybody. Yes. And then they start saying tip, tip, tip. You'll notice in Latin America, you'll have kids come up to you and be like, tip, tip, tip. Where do they learn that from? They don't learn that from themselves. They learn that from foreigners coming there and flashing and throwing money around. And also, man, don't go crazy. You know what I'm saying? These local countries, they have their own economy set up. You know what I'm saying? In some places, for instance, in the DR, you know, the average person pays between $100 and $200 a month for rent. You know what I'm saying? So if you, you know, Papi De Nero, you come down here, you know what I'm saying? You spending, you know, two, three hundred dollars on a female in a day, man, you just blowing things way out of proportion. You know what I'm saying? You're messing up the economy, the local economy. So now the next guy comes down, these women are going to expect way more than uh, probably ever seen.
Also, I might end the video on this note. Unfortunately, guys, this geomaxing advice is getting harder and harder as well. Because now the jig is up. You will need a proper passive income. Prices have been increasing in the Southeast Asia. Not only in Southeast Asia, in Latin America as well. Simply because there has been a massive increase in the number of men going to those countries, creating more competition. And that's another thing, when there are so many men plastering it all over social media, like passport bros are doing, you are inevitably gonna get more competition overseas as well. So you better act quick. Maybe look for other countries than cliche countries like Thailand or Colombia. My estimation is that when these guys, passport bros, realize that Middle East is not near less conservative and violent as the Western media make it out to be, the Middle East is gonna be the next target for these passport bros. For the most part, Middle Eastern countries are still untouched. Probably not for long though. <laughs> the moral of this video is this. Guys, never be ashamed of using your competitive advantage in life. But at the same time, you need to be realistic and smart about it. You gotta keep yourself in check. And I will see you guys in the next one.